Alright, yeah, and welcome back to some more Magic Arena, and today we're going in with a sweet new brew, but a uh, quick thing before we do that, um, I'm back officially, uh, you might still hear in my voice that there is a little bit of residual cold and cough, uh, but for the most part it's gone, I feel pretty much up to recording, and honestly, I was getting tired of not recording, so I'm back, uh, should be on with daily videos from here until the end of time, or until I just get this this illness again. It's the most annoying thing, this illness, because it's really not that, like, it didn't cause me to be bedridden, but the inability to speak kind of just made doing what I'm doing right now essentially impossible. Uh, so, you know, I'm back. Hope you haven't missed me too much. Hope you, you know, wouldn't lie. Hopefully you've missed me a little. I don't know. Is that, is that, I don't know if that's a big ego thing, but, uh, Hi guys, uh, let's restart that, shall we? Welcome to my channel, I'm Super Mad Lad. Today we're going to be playing a uh, Outlaws Visitation list. So this is going to be comboing Divine Visitation, which is a card that's been out of favor for quite some time, uh, mostly because the old Esper Brews of old actually used to use Mortify as one of their um, premium removal spells. So, you know, hitting enchantments was a bad thing. However, in current standard, there aren't really many answers to enchantments, so we're able to take advantage of things like this, as well as the fact that, thanks to Golos as well, standard slowed down quite an exceptional amount, so uh, we actually get to play slower. So we've got uh, we got a slow game plan, a nice uh, mid-rangey kind of tokens brew, built around Divine Visitation. Let's get into it, shall we? Uh, if one or more tokens would be created under your control, that create that many 4-4 uh, four, four white angel creature tokens with flying and vigilance instead. So if, for example, our Legion War Boss on turn 3 uh, at the beginning of combat, well, I'd say turn 3, on turn 5 when Visitation comes down thanks to a number of things. Anyway, uh, Legion War Boss usually makes a 1-1 one, one red goblin creature token that attacks each combat if able, or this combat if able. Uh, rusty, sorry guys. Also still coughing apparently. Um, yeah, it would make a 1-1 one, one token. Divine Visitation says instead of making that 1-1 one, one token you actually make a 4-4. Four, four. So, Legion War Boss is a 3 mana way of making a 4-4 four, four every turn. Pretty sweet. We also have Outlaw's Merriment, which is the second half of the namesake of the deck. Uh, a 4 mana enchantment says at the beginning of a upkeep, choose one at random, uh, which is not good. Uh, create a red and white creature token with these characteristics. A 3-1 with Trample and Haste. A 2-1 with Lifelink and Haste. Or a 1-2 with whenever this creature enters the battlefield, deals 1 damage to any target, which is pretty cool. Allows you to hit X1s, which is not irrelevant. So, on turn 4 we get to put down our token engine, every single turn we're going to be making 4-4s, four or 3-1s, 2-1s, or 1-2s. If we have vi uh, Divine Visitation down, suddenly it's making 4-4s. Four Should be noted that there is a little bit of a, um, a replacement effect here, and I'll go into that, because uh, some of the effects based on these cards are different. So, as this says, it makes a 4-4 four four with Flying and Vigilance. Uh, which means that these Outlaw Merriment uh, tokens, instead of being 4-4s uh, four with uh, Trample and Haste or uh, Lifelink and Haste, they're just going to be 4-4s four with Vigilance and Flying. Um, however, there are certain effects that can be placed upon those tokens um, despite Divine Visitation, and that's actually going to be applicable in the Legion War Boss and the Chandra Acolyte of Flame, very important on these two. So, Legion War Boss, as we mentioned, makes a token that attacks the combat that it is created, which means that Divine Visitation will make a 4-4 that has to attack the combat that it is created. Chandra has a 0 to make two one ones that also get sacrificed at the begin uh, the beginning of the next end step, which means that she's going to make two 4-4s, four which is really sweet. She's going to be hitting for eight a turn, as opposed to the two a turn that she was making before. However, the two tokens that she's going to create are going to be sacrificed at the end of the turn uh, due to the ruling on Chandra's zero there. Should also be noted a minus two is superb in this deck as well. Uh, not only do we get to minus two and use Lava Coils, which is our premium removal for just creature hate in general, there's a lot of 4-4s uh, four like Questing Beast and things like that you want to kill. 
Um, you know, hitting high drug crisis is never bad a thing in the world. Um, but yeah, there's a lot of things that you want to hit with lava coil. Everything that we can't hit, we have conclave tribunal for. And if we can hit lava coil, but there's too many of them, we also have deafening clarion. So as I was mentioning, the minus two, not only does it get to actually get the lava coil, but she also acts as a late game board wipe as well. If you go for the minus two, uh, either on turn six, having three mana left open, for Deafening Clarion, then you actually get to use her minus two as a three damage to each creature, which is like mini six mana Chandra. It's pretty sweet. Um, or you can actually just uh, use it the turn after, so you can make those tokens or put loyalty on Chandra to keep her alive and then minus the next turn in order to get that Clarion down. It's pretty sweet. It's pretty sweet. And you can also give Life Link as well if the uh, board wipe isn't relevant. Give Life Link to your creatures until the end of the turn. So if we've gone for a wide board state, then we can also. Uh, give all of these tokens lifelink, for example. Um, alternatively, we can even deal three damage to each creature and give lifelink if we've got our Divine Visitation going, obviously, because our main win con creatures are going to be X4s. They're not going to die to our own board wipe, which is pretty sweet. Uh, the other tech tools in the deck are going to be Starfield Mystic. This is a ramp source for us, so we can go turn two Starfield Mystic into turn three Outlaws Merriment into turn four Divine Visitation. Also uh, gives a bit of a cost reduction on the Conclave Tribunal, which has Convoke anyway, so this is a pretty cheap uh, removal spell for both Planeswalkers, permanents, like artifacts and enchantments, and even creatures as well. Whatever we need to take care of, Tribunals are answered to. Uh, but yeah, it just gives us cost reduction on all of those stuff. It's not really good in the late game once you've got your mana set up. Honestly, it's just a 2-2 at that point, but I feel like the use of Starfield Mystic in the early game is really good at getting down that turn 4 visitation so that you can start these merriment tokens going as 4-4s four and just take the game away, honestly. Um, but yeah, we got a 1-of Dawn of Hope because uh, this actually gives us card draw whenever we gain life, which is a thing that we can do off Hunted Witnesses, Deafening Clarions, the occasional merriment token, things like that. Even Rally for the Throne as well, if we pay the Adamant on this, uh, we actually gain one life for each creature you control. This has saved my life many, many times. Uh, do not underestimate this card. It may look like a um, bad sound the alarm, whatever it's called. Um, the one that makes two one ones for two mana at instant speed. That one, raise the alarm. It might look like that, uh, but the one mana extra for that adamant effect is really, really useful. Uh, and that's going to help us make some more tokens as well. But yes, um, as I was saying, Dawn of Hope is actually a mana sink as well. Uh, we can sink any of our spare mana if we draw lands off the top, things like that. Uh, we can make four mana to make a 1-1 one -one with lifelink, which is very useful at staying in the game in the long game, but also makes four fours with our visitation. So that is essentially the deck. Of note, our lands do include Castle Arden Vale, which enters the battlefield tapped unless we control a planes. And we can tap this one for four mana, and make a 1-1 one, one creature token with life, uh, with no, without lifelink, just a 1-1, one, one, uh, which could be a 4-4, four, four, which is pretty sweet. So this is a land that actually activates visitation, it's pretty sweet. Uh, I didn't really want to add any more of these since we are kind of like a split between red and white, there's not a good chance that this is an untapped land on turn 2, uh, so I really didn't want to add a third or a fourth. Uh, you could maybe, maybe fix the mana in such a way, but um, I wasn't too happy with doing that kind of thing. So I just went for the two. It's been doing fine for me all the same. Five planes, seven mountains, four copies of Sacred Foundry, which is also a planes which allows Arden Vale to come into play untapped. We got three Temple of Triumph because we're not actually starting the game off to a race. Uh, the only one drop we have is Hunted Witness and we're not really doing anything until turn two. So this is a great turn one land. It also allows us to filter through the garbage in our deck as well because in the late game, we don't want to be drawing excess lands unless we've got Dawn of Hope. And then Fable Passage as well, which allows us to sacrifice and get a uh, mana of our choice, either basic, plains, or mountain. Very important, since we do have a pretty, um, a pretty greedy kind of mana requirement here. Ideally, I would love my... Uh, my Boros check lands back in play, but Temple of Triumph is just going to have to do, and Fable Passage helps a lot there as well. But yeah, it's another one of those cases where we're not trying to be so aggressive, so Fable Passage on one is also a pretty nice land to play. So if you do enjoy this kind of content, then make sure to hit that like button. But without further ado, let's get into the games. Hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you there. Alrighty then, and we're in. We've got a turn one Hunted Witness 
No signs of a turn three Chandra to turn four Merriment since we're missing the double red, but I think I think we can probably keep this one. Even if we have to skip Chandra, it's turn four Merriment into Visitation, which isn't the worst thing in the world. Um, hmm, yeah. I think depending on what our opponent's playing, it could be all right. If we need something to slow our opponent down, then top decking a wonderful Deafening Clarion would be okay. Temple of Mystery says probably Golos. Let's be honest with ourselves, it's probably exactly that. Uh, so, I mean, if we see, like, turn to a Boreal Graze area, then it's kind of set in stone, right? See what you got. Otherwise, the likelihood is we just go Sacred Foundry tapped and then pass the turn. Uh, they don't really do a great deal that we can interact with in the early game. Playing three fairies on three is pretty much what you should expect, I guess. Alright. Leafkin Druid, not Golos. Okay. But, you know what that is? It's dead. That's what that is. Probably more like Bant Ramp then, so we gotta worry about turn three Nissas. Not anymore, though. Our opponent has to play fair thanks to our Lava Coil. And if they have to play fair, then maybe the Chandra's gonna be pretty good as well. Alright, Healer of the Glade. Maybe they're playing uh, Teema Elementals and they've just kind of gotten a little bit screwed over by their, uh, by their draws. Uh, I'm just going to shock in a Chandra here and Don't start any fires without hmm. me. I could start trading off my Hunted Witness and getting for two damage. So I'm not against doing that, although the alternative is obviously that we just stick a loyalty counter on Chandra and then pass, but Healer of Glade still comes after Chandra anyway, so I think we end up in roughly the same position. This way I can get a little bit of pressure going, get the merriment going. Questing Beast, alright. So Chandra's dead. Hits in the face, Questing Beast triggers. Training is so hard. Yeah, the absurd amount of text on that card comes through in the clutch. Alright, well, we're gonna get an Outlaw's Merriment going. Hopefully it's gonna be quick enough. Uh, we'll eventually start making 4-4s four and then it definitely will be quick enough. I'm gonna go with the Mountain here since we've got the Castle Arden Veil in hand. Don't really need the extra white. And yeah, let's just pass it up. Um, yeah, leave my token back. I can't block the Questing Beast with the token, but at the same time, if I just attack for one, I'm just going to lose it into the questing beast and they're going to hit me for five anyway, so... You know, can't really win on that front. But maybe I can use this token to block something much worse, like a Nissa. Like a Nissa, or a Hydro Crisis. Alright, well I can't block that. So that's not good. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I really do need Divine Visitation right now. Deals one damage to any target. Well, we can't kill anything, so we're just going to give our opponent a little ping. Would have been nice to get the three one there. That would have been, been um, would have allowed me to block the questing beast, but was not meant to be. All right, instead we're just going to go with the divine visitation. So the next turn, the tokens, instead of being random, are now going to be four fours. Which can block questing beast, can block hydro crisis. Is it going to be quick enough? We'll have to see. I mean, even Legion Warboss is going to make me a token as well, so... Time will tell, I suppose. And Castle Arden Vale, for those who don't know, also makes tokens, so... We could even play that if we really wanted to, but Legion Warboss looks to be absolutely what we want to be doing here. But we're taking seven, and that's a Wicked Wolf. Yeah, I think that might just be enough, unfortunately. Uh, so, 4, 5, 6, 7, go to 3, leave my token for a Wicked Wolf block. Next turn I've got 2 tokens. Yeah, if they've got a way to remove this token, I'm going to die. Oh no, I'll have the Legion War Boss, so we don't block here. We go to 2. Make a 4-4. Four, four. Starfield Mystic is just another blocker, and honestly, that's exactly what I need right now. So, Legion Warboss, Starfield Mystic, 
Uh, make a token. It does have to attack, however it has vigilance, so it's really not an issue. And honestly, we might be stabilizing here. We'll have to see. I'm not going to get ahead of myself, because we might just die right on the spot right here, right now, but... Never know. We've got two good blocks on their best creatures here. They don't have a food, so that they can't Wicked Wolf and Sacrifice to make a 4-4 four -four to fight my token. Not right now, anyway. They could do, uh... Gilded Goose, I suppose, into Wicked Wolf. But that would imply my opponent's luckier than I am. And that'll never happen. That'll never be the case. But yeah, we're making two 4-4s four a turn. Our 4-4s four are bigger than their creatures. A Hydroid Crisis right now would be max 3-3. Three three. So we don't have to worry about that. By the time they can make a Crisis bigger... Ooh, Neoform for a 3-drop. Yeah, by the time they could make a Crisis bigger, uh, we would have plenty of tokens then to double block. They're going to go with the Risen Reef so they can start drawing cards. That's probably correct. They want to dig themselves out of this hole that they've found themselves in. Um, this does cost five, so uh, if on top decks, the only thing we can actually play and still Castle Ardenvale is going to be a Hunted Witness. And there's their 4-4. Four -four. Fights my Legion War Boss. Probably correct, because it is generating 4-4s four every turn, and obviously that ain't good. But we're hitting them in the face for 8, and it's Vigilance, so we can uh, block, as well as attack here. I'm loving where we're at. Stabilized at just the right time, it seems. This uh, grindy format definitely allows things like Divine Visitation and Outlaw's Merriment to really get through there. Flood of Tears! for our opponent. Is that enough? I think that's enough, because yep, they get to go questing beasts. And we can't make a 4-4. We can only make a 1-1, which can't be blocked by the questing beast, so... Womp womp. You can have a good game, even though I don't ever emote people, usually, who start first, because it's just BM most of the time. But you know what? You, you top-decked better than I did, so congratulations. All right, well, let's go for the next game, because honestly, that was pretty close, and I was quite happy with how that went, despite the fact that I'm at minus two and my opponent isn't. Okay, we're in, and yeah, we could take this hand. We got a turn three Legion War Boss, which isn't amazing, but we can remove something on two... Board wipe on three if we really want to and lead off with Merriment on four. I'm happy with this. Let's see what our opponent's doing. Mono black so far into Knight of the Evan Legion. Alright. Ooh, a second Merriment. Alright, if we can get to four lands, that's gonna be tasty. Certainly tasty. Alright, can we avoid killing whatever this is here? And then instead go for a Clarion, and it looks like we probably can. Alright, so we can save our removal here, because we're not going to need it. Our opponent, if they do activate Knight of the Ebon Legion for the three mana here, they're just going to have three toughness, and Clarion gets rid of it anyway. So, yeah. Ideally, what our opponent's doing here, uh, less so Robber of the Rich, since it steals a card from me. Uh, which turned out to just be a land. One of the best lands, of course, but... A land nonetheless. Um, yeah, we were trying to kill card advantage there. And yeah, we got ourselves a 3 for 1, which we're pretty happy with. As I mentioned though, would love that land that they just exiled. So hopefully we were going to flood without that robber of the rich. <laughs> we'll see. Spawn of Mayhem. That's a good one. That's certainly a good one. Um, when do you start pinging? If you have 10 or less life, put a counter on it. Hmm. I'm wondering whether or not we can afford to go with our Outlaw's Merriment. Um, or if we should just Lava Coil the Spawn of Mayhem. I guess because of uh, Spectacle, I don't really want this to become cheaper. And then like Land, Spawn of Mayhem, 2-drop is an option. It's not a big likelihood of things to happen, but I think I don't really want to take 4 damage here. I'm happy to slow the game down again. But yeah, we do want to start getting these down as soon as possible. Especially having the life-linking ones, I think it's going to be very nice. You get to actually see uh, all of the tokens cycle through. 
So there's a lifelink one. Very nice. And then there's also the rogue, which picks off X1s, which is pretty sweet. Yep, not too bad. And they all come in with haste. Uh, the other two have trample or lifelink, so it's pretty good. Alright, robber of the rich gets a rally of the throne. And... Hmm. Well then, I think we're just going to go with an Outlaw's Merriment here. We can't really go lower on cards than our opponents, so Robber of the Rich is just going to get to do his thing. But most of the things that we're going to get off Outlaw's Merriment are going to be useful. If they use our uh, Rally of, for the Throne, making some 1-1s, one then the third option, the 1-2 that pings, is going to be useful. 3-1 uh, with Trample is always typically the best one you could ask for. And well, now we've got ourselves another good Clarion, so that's pretty good. And they got my Divine Visitation. Hate you. How dare you. That's going to be real bad. Uh, they can't really activate them, though, until they attack him with Robber of the Rich, which is obviously something I don't want them to do. All right. We got a 3-1. Less than ideal. The Lifelink's the best one there for us. Uh, but we get to go in for 3. Clarion away the board. Hopefully survive. Uh, but we do get a Hunted Witness here as well, so we can defend a little bit there. Starfield Mystic's not useful. Uh, it's only kind of a ramp source for us, really. We don't get to use any of the other exceptional parts of that card, unfortunately. And being at 6 is awkward. Especially seeing something like that. I'm going to need some really lucky hits off of our merriments. Otherwise we may be in a bit of trouble. I suppose we could actually go with the Chandra. Uh, uh, we need the, an extra red actually to get the lava coil going. Um, hmm. We do have Rally of the Throne as well, which we can do with Adamant, which actually gives us one life for each creature we control, which is pretty nice. So we could do uh, Hunted Witness and then Rally gain some life. Pay the Adamant. And now we're at nine. Uh, I, hmm. I think I want to swing for two. We're not actually going to like trade uh, particularly well. And I think we also want to do it with the Hunted Witness as well. Just getting that damage. We're not going to trade very well. Obviously, we're going to just gain two life. But it's a token that came from a permanent that we're just going to get back later. I think my life total is particularly important here. And pressuring our opponent as well. Dreadhorde Butcher is completely useless. So that's very nice. Uh, they can do a Castle Lockthwain for a one red source kind of drop, maybe a shock. Losing one life. Looks like they didn't get anything good. Or anything playable, anyway. So it's probably just going to be a chump and a chump when we get a life linker back from the Hunted Witness block. Something like that. Uh, they're not even going to attack. We get a 3 1. Not too bad. Alright, so. By minus you, you only go to two, which is a great spot to be in. So yeah, I think we just get the lava coil on the dread presence here. And this thing doesn't say you can cast the spell with uh, any color of mana, so I do need red mana, of course, which is why this sacred foundry is actually not too bad. We have to shock ourselves, but in the long run, uh, we're saving life on that one. We could even do a rally of, for the throne. How much life will we gain with that? Uh, two, four, five, six, seven life. Still pretty good. Honestly. I'm not against that. Um. Hmm. Hmm. Maybe. Maybe that's actually. No. We, we probably have to kill the Dread Presence. This is gaining life as well. <laughs> Top myself back out of it. I don't know. I could see an argument for them, though. And let's get in with our good stuff. Uh, do we want to get in with a Hunted Witness as well? I want to leave back a blocker and a blocker through removal for the Dreadhard Butcher, because I don't really want it getting any bigger, and I'd rather not take any damage. So, yeah, let's just offer this up. They can point that at our face, or they can point it at a Hunted Witness, and we get a blocker back anyway, which it would be a blocker with lifelink, which is very nice. And hitting Chandra really doesn't do anything, to, to be honest. It's not often that your Chandra really ever adds loyalty or minuses, uh, so I'm perfectly happy with the outcome here. We're at 9, they're at 12. 
So we're a little far behind, but not that far behind. They're also also looking to go to 11 here, maybe finding a shock. They don't find anything good. And we get a pinger, which is just going to ping our opponent's face. And from here, I guess we're just going to go with another merriment. So we can start generating more tokens as we go. And yeah, let's just make some elementals. And even a hunted witness. Let's go all out. Let's do it. I don't think we can die on the backswing. Feeling relatively confident that we can have them dead next turn. Maybe it's just not worth the risk necessarily. But we'll see. They're going to need like exile removal to stop hunted witness from being a blocker anyway. Rotting Regisaur is not going to matter. We have a blocker on Judith, which turns into another attacker. Ooh, what have they got here? A split card? Like a Chandra's Pyromancy? A Lava Coil. Ooh, that's what they were looking for. Okay. So they kill Chandra, but we're making at least... Uh, hmm, an extra two points of damage through our opponent's attack. Yeah. So I just don't see what they were going to get out of that one. Legion War Boss. And we actually managed to beat them without our namesake cards. So that's pretty good. Well, we got one half of the namesake combo, I suppose, but... Outlaw's Merriment coming through. And yeah, we just got right the right amount of lifelink there, which is really tasty. We got our Outlaw's Merriments going off just in time. So yeah, really nice showing from the deck there. Let's go for another game. Okay, we're in, and I think this one is a keepable hand. We're not doing anything for the first three turns. However, if our opponent is, then we've got a board wipe, essentially. Otherwise, we can lead off with a Legion War Boss and start taking advantage of our opponent's slow start. Either that, or just play a Merriment and start growing our board full of lots of little tasty different creatures. I'm, yeah, I'm happy with this hand. And we've also got our mana perfectly fixed as well. We need to be at 5 mana. That's the top of our curve. Uh, we can go a little bit shorter than that if we find Starfield mix, uh, Starfield Mystics along the way. Uh, but, you know, they're not a great top deck if you don't have them in your opener, honestly. Alright, we're going to keep. And our opponent, what are you playing? Well, looks like a potentially aggressive deck... Uh, hopefully if it's going to be Gruel Aggro, their Spellbreaker on 3 isn't a 4-4. I'd imagine they'd actually haste that thing in. Uh, but we need everything to be an X3 or less in order to make sure our board wipe works sufficiently. So we could see like Pelt Collector here maybe. Edgewall Innkeeper. Hmm, interesting. It's maybe some sort of, uh, I don't know, Jund Adventures kind of thing. Interesting, interesting. I don't expect it to stay red-green, honestly. I'm not sure there's a sufficient amount of adventures in there that are worth playing. But I could be wrong. I mean, a lot of the good adventures are green. Yeah, it's Jund. Alright. So, Splashing Black allows for a fair few other things, making me discard. Um, there's like a four-mana Mind Rot effect. Uh, then there's also... Uh, Murderous Rider, of course, in the black areas. And red gives you your uh, little giant. Little shock giant. He's a little kiwi. That's all you need to know. Alright, so as long as our opponent plays adventures and not the actual creatures themselves, these innkeepers aren't going to get anything done. Uh, I imagine maybe on two, though, they do actually go with their... Is it called Stonebreak Giant? I should know, I've played a lot with that card recently, but it's just escaping my mind right now. Foul Maya Knight. Alright, drawing two. Not too bad. The card is bad. I, I don't find this card to be particularly good, but with the right setup, you, uh, you get some pretty interesting turns. Alright, well I do definitely want to actually... Um, wipe this board so I'm not really interested in playing Starfield Mystic here I think I'm just gonna play land and pass this is just gonna die essentially I'll happily take the three damage to not lose my Mystic 
And if we get uh, mana screwed as well and end up drawing um, our divine visitation, then we want four mana and a mystic in play. We'll see if that ends up happening though. Beanstalk giant. If they go for another swamp, then they could have another foul my knight. And my clarion's looking a little less good at that point. Yeah. So they've drawn four cards, which, you know, this definitely clarion's going to kill four. Works out about even, but they've gone a little bit deeper through their deck, so it's just not not amazing. But better than nothing, right? So, three damage to each creature. Pew pew. You dead. Alright. And up to five mana. I'm curious to find out whether or not our deck can keep up with a, a list like this. One that is trying to go for the long game and has some big top end creatures. I mean, we do actually generate four fours pretty consistently. Um all the time so you know maybe we can get there uh, let's just go with uh, it doesn't really matter Castle Ardenvale into Outlaws Merriment and I guess maybe War Boss Mystic next turn something like that I'm really wanting Divine Visitation at this point I don't know if our opponent can really deal with a Divine Visitation or enchantments in general unless they're running specific cards to deal with them I'm not entirely certain that there is a destroy artifact or enchantment adventure. Alright, so this one's a really good one. A human rogue that actually deals one damage to any target. Getting rid of the 1-1 one -one means this love struck beast can't attack anymore, which is really nice. Uh, yeah, I think we're just going to go with our war boss and our mystic and then see where we go from there. They do have two mana for their uh, murderous rider. So I'm not expecting war boss to actually live until the combat step to make me my 1-1. One -one. Yeah, looks like he's dead. Oh, Bone Crusher Giant. All right, that's what. I'm... What did I call it? Stone Crusher. I think that's what I called it. Oh wow. They have all the cards. So these are X threes. So what we want to do is draw a land next turn. That means we can do Chandra minus, and then get Deafening Clarion. For now, I'm going to pass just in case they actually do have a way of making a one one here. I don't really want to take five. As much as I do enjoy the music, taking five is not really what I had in mind. I think we might lose, though. Uh, we need, like, Conclave Tribunals to deal with Beanstalk Giant. And it's coming. Beanstalk Giant is coming. And, yeah, as I might expect, our opponent was lucky enough to have their next Lovestruck Beast ready to go. So, spew forth the big boys. Alright, Clarion one time. Good stuff. Alright, so we go Plains, Chandra. Uh, let's swing in for three first, since we're going to lose this token anyway. Opponent not realizing I have a Clarion in my yard, I guess. And yep, just blow up the world. Boop, boop. Alright, again they need a 1-1 for that Lovestruck Beast, so if they draw another Lovestruck Beast, they've got it, sure. But, the big problem is the Beanstalk Giant. Uh, we'll be chomp blocking that until the end of time, so we really need to find something really good like a Divine Visitation. That's pretty good. Is it enough? We'll find out next time on Dragon Ball Z. Alright. So, hit you for eight. Unfortunately, Chandra's uh, Claws still takes effect, similar to uh, Legion Warboss here that says attack uh, each turn if able. That also applies to our tokens. Uh, the only thing that doesn't apply is the actual creatures that are made off of Outlaw's Merriment. So, when we're making 4-4s four with this, they don't actually enter with the Trample and Haste because that's part of the token itself, not a part of uh, an ability that's given to that token, if you get it, if you get my meaning. Uh, so these basically, um, Merriment just makes 4-4s, four whereas these ones have a when this thing does a thing kind of effect. We won uh, because we're really good at magic. Uh, we just block Beanstalk Giant and then we hit them for 8 with haste uh, with 2 more 4-4s. Four and apparently our opponent could not find an answer to that with their Once Upon a Time. I guess, what were they looking for? Um, what could kill us on the spot? They'd need to be able to kill our token and deal two. 
but uh, I don't know if there's a specific way that they could get there. They could kill our Chandra to live and then see where they go from there, I suppose. Uh, we'd have a Legion War Boss swinging with haste as well as a token with haste as well. So, yeah, I think there's just too much for our opponent to keep up with there. They need planar cleansing, basically. And even then, <laughs> I'm not sure if it'd be good enough. But, yeah, cool. Next game. Alrighty then, we're in, and I'm perfectly happy with this hand. So we're not doing anything until turn three, which is exactly the same as what happened last time. Uh, but we have a lot of turn three plays, which are decent depending on the situation, which is, is always fine, you know? So we're going to take this one. We even have a play on turn one, if you could call it that. Actually, it's scrying for a good card. I think because we got Clarion already, we don't really need the second. Solwari is matchup dependent though as to whether or not it's necessary and yeah, something like Cavalcade definitely makes me regret bottoming that card. Fun, fun, best of one. Alright. I mean, in a sense, we're also taking advantage of the downsides of best of one uh, since we're running a lot of enchantments that our opponent probably isn't teching against because enchantments can't, aren't really in the meta right now. No need to run Mortify and things like that because nobody really plays Tribunal. Things like that. Uh, always always look at the meta and when you're trying to beat a format, always keep in mind what's not being played as well. If there's a reason for that, then uh, don't do it. But if there's no real reason for it, like, you know, in this case, enchantments kind of uh, fell out of favor a little bit, then you want to Bring those in, because nobody's answering them. So we're going to kill the board state here. It's not great, because uh, Dreadhorn Butcher gets a hit in. They also get to a mass, so they get a board state that's left behind. Uh, but I don't think I really want a Butcher getting any bigger, and there's, there's no real other answer for me there. Uh, maybe the Chandra lives long enough to Clarion another time, perhaps? We're not sure just yet. Uh, that could certainly be the case. I could bring her up to five... And then, she's probably not going to die. And I'll be able to minus for the Clarion next turn. If I go for maybe the Loyalty on this card, that might be a better chance. So we'll take her up to five. Our opponent needs to deal one point extra to Chandra or just straight up kill her in order to stop us from Clarioning here. Okay, I mean, we're happy to lose Chandra if it comes to it. And if our opponent wants to lose these Footlight Fiends, that's also fine with me. The other alternative is that we actually just, like, Tribunal the Conclave Tribunal. Oh. Conclave Tribunal the Priest of Forgotten Gods. I don't really know what I said there, but it sounded like I'd made a, an egregious, <laughs> egregious error. Alright, let's see if they go for face. Or if they go for our Chandra. Hmm. Alright. Took her down to two. Very smart play from our opponent. Hey, go easy. I'm training here. Very smart play from our opponent. I don't think we can come back. Unfortunately. Uh, we can do Legion War Boss. And make some tokens. And then also try uh, do the the tokens here, and then we can do a tribunal. These little guys are great. But I'm not really too pleased about all of this. I think I'm going to go with the Dreadhorde Butcher Exile here. I don't think at this point the Priest of Forgotten Gods is really a problem, since I'm generating tokens now. It's like if they make me sack here, I still get to keep my war boss, in theory. Mayhem Devil. Now I don't. Now they've got the entire combo down. So, uh, yeah, another case of I wish we weren't in best of one. Because information is important. So they get to swing for three, killing Chandra, hitting us for two, and then they get to sack some stuff, killing a Legion War Boss as well. There's just no coming back from this. Our opponents set up their engines, and I don't know. I guess finding a Clarion is our out here. Can we do that? I'm not sure. 
So we lose War Boss, we lose two life. Opponent gets one of those Gutter Bones back into play. Yeah, then we lose a little bit more. Keep losing more. And that looks like their turn. Outlaws Merriment. Uh, is there any hope for us? I can Tribunal the Mayhem Devil, I suppose. Uh, but I don't think it's going to be good enough. They hit us for one down to five. Play Gutter Bones, among probably lots of other things. Witch's Oven. Okay, not too relevant now. Looks like they want to take us down another two and draw a card here. That's fine by me. Puts me no further away from death than I was before. Yeah, they can bring back a Gutter Bones, play a Gutter Bones. Still got one red mana. Or one red or black mana. Just going to bring them both back. Okay. And we draw a land, which is garbage. Um, I mean, how do we want to do this? We're going to lose creatures if I don't play tokens. Merriment makes me lifelink tokens, which is really what I want. But I think I'm going to die if I'm not very, very careful with my plays here. Uh, War Boss makes me a token. I think I have to get the Merriment down and just hope to not die. I'm going to go to like one here. Which we'll, we'll find out if he's good enough. I'm not sure it is. But I don't think the Legion War Boss tokens were getting me any closer either. There's Gutter Bones. Gutter Bones. And swing for one. Or are you gonna sack? Gonna sack to take me to one. Alright. Might be searching for like a shock. That would also just like kill us on the spot. I'm just looking for life gain here. Life gain. Even another. I guess another clarion would be okay. Because it kind of. Kills this absurd engine that they've got going here that's just not stopping. Let's find out if we get a lifelinker. Very nice. A lifelinker and we also got a lava coil. Okay. So we're going up to three. We're killing their priest. Not technically because they've got a witch's oven. Uh, so they get a food token which kitty cat can do stuff with if they've got that. We've got a blocker for the gutter bones. Oh, come on. There we go. And there's signs of stabilization here. Uh, no, not certain that they're good signs of being stable. But, you know, it's better than we were before. Positive attitude and all that. Yeah, that's pretty good. Make some elementals. We are forced to block Gutter Bones, so we're taking two. And they can even sack some tokens on end step if they really want to. Oh. Yeah, oh. thought that was an insane move not to attack there. What is even our draw here that's good? Um, Chandra's looking pretty dead. Just gonna put that out there. Unless they've got a blocker here. Takes two uh, mana to get the gutter bones out of their graveyard. Do you got the one point? Come on! Ooh, a pinger! Ping the gutter bones. Oh boy! Mountain. Don't do this to me, game. 
why why do you hurt me so? All right, so I do need to hit in for the two life link. I don't want to die to shock, so that's absolutely happening. Send those there. Send in the clowns. Uh, let's also. I guess maybe we want to just like go at them. Let's just go at them. Let's make this a two three. Go up to life, kill Chandra. Pass the turn. Maybe this is a bit too aggressive. I'm just trying to think what haste creatures they've got, and I feel like they would have thrown a lot of them out immediately. Mayhem Devil to sack a food to kill my life linker is definitely a thing. Um, shocking. Yeah. Could do with some more life linking. Opponent goes up to 12. Definitely don't want Mayhem Devil around though. And then they get to kill a goblin token. Are they going to go for us? Okay. To allow them to get their gutter bones out. So we got 3 1 and. <gasps> oh, that's so good. Oh, does that win us? I think that might win us the game. Um, no, un undo, undo. I play that during combat to get the two extra tokens from Legion War Boss. They're gonna sack Witch's Oven on the Gutter Bounds to ping off one of the tokens, but gaining more. That's probably all the life we need. Honestly. We're at 13. I mean, how can we lose? <laughs> mentor, mentor. This is where they sack Witch's Oven, Gutter Bounds, do their thing, stop me from gaining points on a creature, but they didn't. Alright. Yeah, I don't need my war bosses anymore. I really don't, you're at one. Oh my god. Uh, board wipe or bust? Because there's no way in any reality where you 13 me here. Jesus Christ, we actually beat this Rakdos list. This thing's going around a lot as well. Really happy we've managed that. So that's five, six, seven, eight on the witch's oven, ten on the sacrifice on the tokens. That's just not enough. And we've got them. The life gain on the food tokens not going to get them out of lethal range. Okay, they get rid of a three one. Need to attack him with those one ones. Go bones can block, right? Yeah, go bones can block. Maybe they're thinking that those elemental tokens are going to be able to stay back as blockers. Because that's sure as hell not going to help you at the end of this turn. Damn, this deck's legit. I know I'm in unranked, but still, we've come up against some pretty big decks. Like, being in un unranked is not a sign of a deck not being good. There you go, your blockers. And I guess there go my attackers, but honestly, it's still, it's still lethal on board, my friend. Block two of my biggest things, and that is... Uh, oh, six, seven, eight. Oh my god, it's a lot. <laughs> That's all you need to know. Another game taken down without even finding our Divine Visitation. Outlaw's Merriment coming through in the clutch. I think if we'd have not RNG'd our way into a lifelink token, I think we'd lose that game. But uh, I'm going to take all the luck that I can get, because God knows when it actually starts to count, my luck will just fly right out of the window. But we'll see. Next game. All right then, we're in, and we got removal, removal, a dawn of hope is pretty nice. Honestly, this hand's not looking too great, but I'm gonna take it. <clears throat> Sorry. 
still in uh, weird voice mode, unfortunately. That's not quite gone, but feeling healthy enough to, to get back into recording because I'm certainly tired of not doing that. All right, let's go with the Dawn of Hope. Uh, they could have three fairy to bounce it. We really don't care, but obviously it does give them a target to three fairy all over. Not sure specifically what our opponent could be playing. Maybe they're trying Esper Control, which I haven't seen in a long time. Or maybe they're Esper Dance. Which is the popular version on Esper right now. <coughs> they might be holding some Oath of Kaya's, thinking I'm going to play creatures. Um, but if they pass here, it's a good sign that they've got Counter Magic and Card Draw in their hand. Hmm. Yeah, not sure what they're playing here. Let's find out, because obviously it's going to get countered. We got nothing better to do. Wow, that resolves. Never expected that to happen. This is one of the matchups I'm kind of curious about, though. A control-based deck that has bounce for enchantments. Going with the Oath of Kaya into Wishclaw Talisman. All right. 100% Esper Dance. Well, let's dance. <laughs> Divine Visitation, let's do this. Alright, if three fairy bounces Visitation, then uh, we do get ourselves basically a 3-1. Yeah, opponent with the Doom Foretold. We'll start making me sacrifice my permanence. That's the downside. We are going to have to lose some perms here, which I think is just going to be a Dawn of Hope thing. Uh, I think I'm actually going to make a 1-1 here. Or a 4-4. And yeah, let's just Dawn of Hope. Another 4-4. Four, four. And maybe we actually go with the Tribunal. So, uh, oh, this means we can't attack. Tribunal on Doom Foretold is kind of what I'm thinking. Um, three Fairy will be a problem. But so is losing any of our permanents here. Uh, we don't want to commit too much to the board as well, because they do run a one of uh, Planar Cleansing, uh, which obviously our opponent's going to find. Ah, I think we have to Tribunal. Worst case scenario, they just play another Doom Foretold and we uh, give them it back. It can't get any worse than one Doom Foretold already, so Guild Cloak. And obviously Wishclaw Talisman, pretty bad for us. Uh, they're waiting until they got a 3 Fairy though, so that they can bounce the Wishclaw Talisman to give me no value. Because if this comes over to my side, then I get to find whatever I want. Which I'm not really sure what I want, to be honest. But yeah, the deck's full of Kaya's Wraths and things like that, so I'm a little confused why we're not seeing any of those. Um, I think I might just swing as is. I'm unsure as to how much I should actually commit to this board. If I play anything, I can't Castle Arden Veil, but if they play a Doom Foretold, then they're going to get two Doom Foretolds back. Um, but I could play this Hunted Witness, which is fine, and leaves me with something through a board wipe. A Kaya's Wrath, it gives me a 4-4, essentially. Uh, I think that's okay. Yeah, okay. Hmm. I could actually try and trick them with a Conclave Tribunal on Wishclaw Talisman. If they think they're going to lose it, then they'll search for a, a card, but they don't need it because they got that Planar Cleansing. Alright. Doom Foretold, Sacks, because we have nothing good. Uh, we'll go with a Lava Coil. And they get 2 2. Yeah, now we're in Trouble Town. Population me. Um. I think it's just going to be Temple, Coil, the token. There's not really many... Ooh, hello. Not really many creatures in their deck. Uh, they can dance, of course, for 4-4s four later down the line, but it needs to be X6, so... It's more of a finisher than anything else, and if they're going to finish that way, then we're just dead. So, yeah, let's just... Let's game for the damage. They found their one of, so it is what it is. Thought Erasure, help yourself. The good cards are on top of our deck. Kai's Wrath into the bin. Not so sure about that particular move, but maybe they've got another one. Hmm. Interesting. Well, Merriment. 
They don't run counter magic, typically, so... I don't expect to be countered. Murderous Rider, okay. So that can make a 2-3 with lifelink to block. Buys them a fair bit of time. And yeah, I think once they've got to dance X6, we're just going to lose here. Especially since the merriment's going to come on our upkeep, so we can't really clarion in that way and then swing in. It's just not an option we got available to us. Uh, but there are a lot. Um, it's basically a 1 in 3 of being dead against the murderous rider anyway, so honestly, I'm reasonably happy to just clarion this away. Uh, Dance makes 4-4s four and this deals 3 damage as well, so that's something to keep in mind. Um, yeah, I think I just want to clarion. I don't really want to give them life because I think them being on 8 is more important than me being on 18. So, let's get rid of that. Play our Hunted Witness. Gives us another attacker through a board wipe. Not the best attacker, obviously, but an attacker nonetheless. I'll take what I'm given. Up until the point where I lose. Yeah, here comes the dance. So that's a dance x6. Makes loads of 4-4s four and we can do nothing about it. We're just dead. Um, even one of them's a Kaya's Oath of Kaya, right? Oath of Kaya and a Doom Foretold. Yeah, so we're going to lose our Outlaw's Merriment. There's just, yeah, there's too much here. So, Hunted Witness turns into a token that doesn't do anything. We have no board wipes that deal with this. We're not really trying to beat this deck, necessarily, which is kind of why I was curious as to the outcome of it. Uh, I expected the outcome to be, I don't know, mixed, to be honest, because they have four Kaya's Wraths in their deck. Uh, but other than that, like their removal is Doom Foretold and uh, plen uh, Cleaner Plent. Planar Cleansing. Don't know why I can always get that one the wrong way around. Interesting. Alright, well. Let's get rid of... I mean, if I don't get rid of Doom Foretold, then Doom Foretold is just going to get rid of my Tribunal. So, let's just pass... See if we can keep living. I don't know. I'm kind of on death's door right now, so... I'm not sure I should keep playing here, but I've said that about a few games that we have absolutely just stormed away to victory. Uh, I've not really seen the light at the end of the tunnel, but it has arrived nonetheless. Alright. Um, so I could block here, take 16, and then gain 1. Go to 1. Probably die to an Oath of Kaya. If I'm dead to an Oath of Kaya, then I'm dead to an Oath of Kaya. Yeah. If I block with that 2-1, I'm still on 3 and I die to the Oath anyway. Yeah. Cool. Alright. So, yeah, we weren't winning that one. Unless our opponent is an absolute weirdo. Uh, but, yeah. There's no out to us, unfortunately. This, this is just a good matchup for them through and through. So, yeah. Next game. Alright, we're in, and unfortunately we are all four drops with this one, short of obviously the Haunted Witness, which is also unfortunately a two drop in this current hand, so I'm really not happy with this one, let's just mull that back, and not blown away by this one either, uh, but double Starfield Mystic could get us our, our stuff done, I'm not sure about this one either though, maybe this is a mull. Going down to five cards, though. If that hand is awful, we just lose. Uh, I think because this one's acceptable, I think I'm going to take it. And we'll go down one rally of, for the throne. Because I think that the mana ramp on the Starfield Mystic is going to be really important here. And <laughs> um, we drew a land, which is really nice. Okay. Uh, so we can just do tap Sacred Foundry instead of thinning the deck. Since lands are what we want, we don't really want to decrease our odds of finding them. So it's a, a little bit of advantage that we're eking out, but still, every little helps, right? 
So here I think I'm actually just going to lava call the Night Veil Sprite because I think the Surveil is going to be pretty important for them, making sure that they get good draws and things like that. And this way I actually have Starfield Mystic into Tapland essentially. Which again, I might not even crack the Fabled Passage, uh, since when we get to 4 mana, hit our 4th drop, this land's just untapped anyway. So, let's play our Starfield Mystic. Looks like we're up against a blue-white Flyers list, so it's pretty interesting. The argument for actually um, cracking Fabled Passage, either on my turn or on their end step, is to play Rally for the Throne. But we don't even get to activate the Adamant on that, so I'm really not too pleased about taking that. This is actually pretty decent for us. We kept the spare, spare uh, Starfield Mystic just for this instance, actually, so... Yeah, they've taken their entire turn out to remove a creature we're not that bothered about. And we drew another mountain, which is not ideal. Again, we can't really activate the Adamant on Rally for the Throne, but we do have a Divine Visitation next turn if our opponent doesn't remove our Starfield Mystic or have Counter Magic, which this deck, short of maybe something like a Quench, is not really going to have. Um, there is a Counter Spell Flyer in Throne of Eldraine, but that only counters uh, spells of three or less, which this is obviously not. Cavalier of Gales. Okay, that's a big boy. Opponent gets to Brainstorm. So drawing three and putting two back. But we get to dis actually resolve this Divine Visitation, and then if we get to go with our Rally for the Throne, we're making two 4-4s, four so a 5-5 five five here is not really that big of a deal. And I think making Flyers against our opponent is probably probably the death nail for them. Alright, so Loyal Pegasus can't even attack alone. We got a Chandra, which makes two angels a turn. Very nice. Uh, let's go for our planes. And thank God that they didn't kill our Starfield Mystic. So now we get our visitation down. What we do need to do, though, is dodge another tribunal from our opponent. That would be pretty unfortunate. Because our hand's not looking all too great other than that. Alright, so... Warden of Evos Isle. Flyers cost one less to cast, so they might be able to empty their hand out here, and looks like they're going to be doing that. We could go with a Clarion. Might be an option. Uh, Clarion does kill three blockers, uh, three attackers, uh, but we actually have Rally for the Throne, which we can then get our opponent with. If they don't have counter magic, they're in big trouble. Because then we can just eat two of their creatures with our rally. It's not too bad. We do have a guaranteed 4-4. So they're, if they're looking at our cards, looking at our board state, that's going to be pretty apparent to them. That they have to dodge at least one 4-4 here. So we might just see them going with the Cavalier of Gales. And then eating one of our 4-4s for their 5-5. And that thing that gets to actually scry as well uh, when it attacks. So let's see. Maybe they're thinking... Yeah, maybe they're thinking that maybe all these attacks are worth the loss. Since they know we're making a 4-4, I basically chump one of these and then we're taking a lot of damage here. It's understandable why you would want to go for something like that. But uh, yeah, we seem to seem to have got them. Alright, so let's make their stuff more expensive and we'll get rid of this guard mage as well. I think I'm happy to take the 5 from the Cavalier of Gales for now. Um, Loyal Pegasus can't attack alone either, so getting rid of the other flyers is pretty nice. And we even have a Clarion here as well. Uh, we can wipe out extra creatures if they do empty their hand here after that devastating block. So we'll have to see. I'm expecting pacifism. I am not expecting pacifism. Hmm. Conclave Tribunal. Uh, let's go with... I think just a Chandra here is fine. Yeah, I think I'm happy with a Chandra. This is a lot of damage. Anyone need a fire started? I mean, what's our minus? Our minus is Rally for the Throne next turn. I do kind of like that. Alright, well, we win. This deck's sweet. I'm loving this deck. Uh, it seems a little bit slow on the face of it, but the fact that Standard has slowed down so much thanks to, like, you know, Golos being a pretty slow build of a deck. Uh, a lot of people are... 
actually leaning into slower decks as well just to take advantage of that and I'm not doing anything different. I am absolutely following suit and this deck is pretty good. So let's uh, let's open up some packs, shall we? Why the hell not? Boop. What have we got? A Core 2020. Let's see what this one's got. I'm getting a rare ICR out of this. Pretty good. I need some Mythics. Mythics are what I'm lacking, actually. Bag of Holding. Couldn't care less. The rest is Vault Progress. And Throne of Eldraine. Let's see. I'm on to Mythics now. I need this Mythic wildcard. Brazen Borrowers is actually the one of the things I'm looking for. But also Feasting Troll King was a card I was very interested in getting my hands on as well. So happy to see that rare being picked up. Hope you guys enjoyed this one anyway. If you did, make sure to hit that like button and subscribe to get notifications when I go live in the future. Make sure to hit that bell icon. But other than that, guys, thanks very much for watching. Hope you enjoy. And if you enjoy this deck as well, build it yourself because it's actually it's not too bad. Uh, I don't think it's going to be winning any tournaments, but... Uh, you know, as a best of one kind of deck, it seems to be doing just fine. So thanks very much, guys. I'll see you all next time. Bye-bye.